My name is Dr. Clark. I made this video to help you understand a few ideas from the start of our general chemistry class. You can watch it, but that might not help you as much as if you interact with it. When questions are posed, see if you can answer them. Pause the video if that helps. You can simply follow along, but I don't think that's going to help you very much in terms of understanding the topics. If you want to be amused, choose a different video. The topics within this video involve descriptions of matter, a little look at physical and chemical changes, and what does it mean to separate a mixture. These topics are found in Chapter 1 of our textbook. When you're describing matter, consider the following options. Let's say you're looking at oil and water, water and ethanol, or water. An initial question one could ask is, is it uniform throughout, or do you see different regions? The oil and water is clearly in different regions of the container. We would call that a heterogeneous mixture. Both the water and ethanol and the water, they're both homogeneous. Next question, does it have a variable composition? A beaker could hold water and ethanol in different proportions, and we'd still call it water and ethanol. This is what it means to say it has a variable composition. Water, however, is not like that. Every time we say that something is water, we're talking about precisely the same substance. Water and ethanol, we'd call that a homogeneous mixture or a solution. Water is a pure substance. Finally, we can ask the question, can the water or the H2O molecules be separated into simpler substances? In terms of H2O, we can. It's comprised of atoms of hydrogen and oxygen. These are elements. It's therefore a compound that's combining the elements hydrogen and oxygen. We can also consider substances in different states of matter. When we have a phase change, we see the same substance, but a different arrangement of the particles. You can have an O2 molecule that is combined to form a solid, loosely arranged as a liquid, or the molecules all spread out as O2 gas. This is different from a chemical reaction. A chemical reaction involves different substances. You could start with sucrose and have it undergo a chemical reaction to form the sugars glucose and fructose. Let's see if we can now apply this information with a typical exam question. What best describes the contents of a bottle of carbonated water? Ignore any gas is found in the top of the can in your analysis. So take a second, pause the video, work through the flow chart here, and see if you can describe the bottle of carbonated water. We can begin by considering it as matter. Is it uniform throughout? Yep, the carbonation, which would be carbon dioxide gas, is spread throughout the container. Does it have a variable composition? It does. We would call it a homogeneous mixture. By variable composition, you could have different amounts of carbon dioxide in the water, and we would still call it carbonated water. Carbonated water does not mean it's always the same relative amounts again and again, which would lead us to a pure substance. Instead, we see that we can have different amounts, and we'd still call it carbonated water, so it's a homogeneous mixture. How would a chemist classify a toothpick, which is a splinter of wood? There's different choices there, but on a question like this, before I went through and read the choices, I would ask myself, how would I classify it? I don't want to read the choices because I might get led in a different direction. So first of all, how would you classify a toothpick? Take a second, see if you can do that, and then let's work through the choices. As far as working through the choices, a piece of wood, a splinter of wood, is it matter? Absolutely. Is it homogeneous? Well, I think it sort of depends. I've seen pieces of wood that were inhomogeneous, that had different knots or different hard regions and soft regions be in different colors. But let's say it is homogeneous. What then? The key question, I think, is does it have a variable composition? And exactly what does a variable composition mean? Remember, variable composition allows us to distinguish be between something that is a homogeneous mixture and a pure substance. At a chemical level, does wood contain multiple pure substances, or is it a pure substance all by itself? 
Wood is not a pure substance. It contains chemicals like water and cellulose. These are the primary components in wood. These are pure substances that can be separated into simpler substances. So wood is a homogeneous mixture that's comprised of different compounds or perhaps an inhomogeneous one, again, depending on the scale at which we look. With this question then, it would best be answered as saying that the piece of wood is not a pure substance because it can have a variable composition. Let's consider this question. An ice cube and some liquid, meth liquid ethanol are placed in a sealed container. After a while, the ice cube melts. If we are comparing the before and after conditions, what changed, if anything? Let's consider the number of atoms, molecules, pure substances, the arrangement of the molecules, or none of these. Well, if we were describing what was happening, we have liquid ethanol, just given the symbol L to show that it's in the liquid state, and the H2O solid, because that's what an ice cube is. A transformation is described when it goes from the H2O solid, the ice, to H2O liquid. That's the melting process. What took place at the particle level? Well, nothing happened to the ethanol, but the water, it began as ice, which was a solid, with a particular arrangement at the particle level, as we see on the left. And then it became all jumbled together more. It became liquid water. Now, during that process, did we add or remove atoms? Add or remove molecules? Nope, we just changed the arrangement. The number of pure substances remained the same. It was the ethanol and the H2O in both cases. But the arrangement of the molecules, especially the within the ice going to the water, is what changed. Here's a similar question. Give this one a try. Water and some liquid ethanol are placed in a sealed container that's put in a refrigerator. After a while, one of the substances begins to freeze, but the other does not. Compare the before and after conditions now. Pause the video, see what you think. Once again, the arrangement of molecules is what is different. We are not adding or removing substances. There's still H2O and ethanol. Those are the pure substances involved. We're not adding or removing atoms or the number of molecules. We're just changing the arrangement. That's what happens when the phase changes. Let's consider this analysis. Let's say we had both water and ethanol, and we wanted to separate them from each other. These are both pure substances, but if you put them in the same container, ethanol is miscible in water, which means it combines completely. It would just look like a clear solution. Is it possible in any way to separate water from ethanol? In distillation, you can. Look at this setup. Water and ethanol were added to a container. We see bubbles forming. We would see vapor rising up within the container. Next to it, we have what's called a condenser with cold water going in and cold water coming out. The purpose of the cold water is to cool the, uh, the glass in, in the condenser itself. Then finally, on the far side, we have a receiving flask. It's going to, it appears, have drops of the liquid going into it. So let's see how this fits with what we were just discussing. What would be happening at positions A, B, and C when the liquid first starts to boil? Take a second, pause the video, see what you think. Within our analysis here, we see that water and ethanol boil at different temperatures. The ethanol is going to boil, boil first. So as we begin to heat it, we would have a change of state involving the ethanol. It would go, off, go from ethanol liquid to ethanol gas. That's what we would have taking place in A. That's what the bubbling represents. It's the ethanol in its vapor phase, as a gas, rising up within the container. So at position B, what do I think is going on? Well, I think we have ethanol gas that has risen and has reached the top of the container. Some of that gas then starts to move through the condenser. The condenser is cooler, so we see a change of state there. It's going from ethanol as a gas to ethanol as a liquid. So in the receiving flask, that's what's dropping out, droplets of ethanol liquid. This can be used to separate water from ethanol, and we're not 
having a chemical change, we just are taking advantage of the fact that they have different boiling points in order to separate the two substances. Let's see if we can look at an exam question that addresses this, this point. So we see a distillation setup. This one again has water and ethanol added to it. And the scenario is the temperature has reached 78 degrees C and the liquid's boiling. At this point in time, what best describes what's in the apparatus at position 3? We can ignore the air that was initially present. Take a second, pause the video, see what you think. Recall that at position 3, we have a gas that's turning into a liquid. We have a change of state. It would be the gas that was boiling at the lower temperature, which is the ethanol. So the question is if we have the ethanol as a gas, ethanol as a liquid, is that the same substance or a different substance? It's the same substance, just in two different states of matter. In this case, we have a pure substance in different physical states. If it were to be a mixture, we'd have to have more than one substance present. And this is not a chemical reaction. It's just a transformation from the gas to the liquid. That's what's taking place within the condenser. How about this question? Same setup, same description of the temperatures reached 78 degrees and the liquid's boiling. At this point in time, what's taking place that gives the following particle representation? So, instead of looking at it in terms of words or an equation, we have a particle description. Where would this be found within our setup? Position 1, 2, 3, 4, or none of these. Take a second, pause the video, See what you think. We mentioned just a moment ago that at 78 degrees, what is occurring? It's the liquid ethanol becoming ethanol as a gas. What describes this? Is it the top equation or the second one? Well, it's going to be the top equation. The second equation is describing a chemical change. Somehow the liquid ethanol is forming carbon dioxide oxygen gas and hydrogen gas. The particle picture is consistent with that second description, but that's not what's occurring within our distillation setup. The best answer here is that a physical change is taking place, not a chemical change. So where is this found within the description? I think none of these is the best answer. We're not breaking the bond within the ethanol, we're simply changing the arrangement from ethanol as a liquid to ethanol as a gas. Be careful here. A common misconception is that boiling a liquid involves a chemical change. It does not. The topics that we've addressed here have include looking at descriptions of matter, contrasting physical and chemical changes, and the separation of a mixture. Various ideas were included in this video. You say you've mastered the content. Are you able to teach it to someone else? If not, seeking additional practice with end of chapter questions from your book is a great idea. These questions will not appear on your own exam. It's crucial to take away insights, however, so you understand these topics on your actual test. Did you make any mistakes while working on the problems? I hope so. Document your errors, learn from the mistakes, and strive for mastery.